Bishop Hobbs has been discharged. Could you just update his records? Uh, yeah. Um, look, wait, this man. Can we please talk about the elephant in the room? <laughs> you could have seen lots of elephants in India had you accepted my excellent opportunity I offered you yesterday. I know you're disappointed. It's not about me. Well, no offence, but it seems like it is. You want me to live your dream? I'd love to go. It's just not the right time for me. We've got the trial coming up. Jack's planning his wedding. You're young. You've got no kids tying you down, no bloke hanging around like a bad smell. Honey, you're young, free, single and ready to mingle. I don't get away with that, do I? <laughs> no. <laughs> I really, really appreciate you putting me forward. I really do. I just don't think I can. You need to think about what you're saying no to. You'd be working with some of the greatest doctors in the world. You'd be fast-tracking your career. As, as much as I love this hospital, there's no way we can offer you the same opportunities. You're not the only one with a family, you know. John Paul and Mercedes have gone AWOL. Goldie and Teresa can barely tie the shoelaces. And my Nana's getting really old now. You know, she needs me to help her. Listen to me, I get it. You've got responsibilities. But uh, I'm so tired of seeing women say no to things all the time. Always putting their family before their careers. It's not the right time for me either. If you were a bloke, you'd be on that flight tonight. Did anyone see you leave? This is a secret meeting. Is that why you've come in disguise? Yeah. Well, I'm a bit disappointed you haven't, to be honest. <sighs> we might be wasting our time anyway. There's no way she's changing her mind. She's adamant. Oh, and Mary used to listen to him in the 80s. Adamant, not Adam Ant. Oh, never mind. She feels she's indispensable. That you lot couldn't cope without her. We'll survive. We always do. We love her and we don't want her to miss out on India. Well, time's running out. The flight's this evening, so you've not got long to convince her to go. Do you think you can do it? Well, I can't. <laughs> but I've sent for reinforcements. Mercedes. No. Goldie. No. Uh, not bronzer. No. Teresa, why do you want to meet down here? The puppet master sent me. Teresa. Of course she did. Only she would think it would be a good idea to send round my ex. All right, don't argue with me. I actually brought you something. It may help you make a decision. Ooh. What's this? Rescued them from the Emporium before it shut. Hey, Teresa told me I was to persuade you to go to India. Right, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to help you weigh it up. Well, this is daft. You know there's a reason why somebody put this in the scrap in the Emporium. Yeah, well, I knew you'd say something like that, but come on, try it. I'll help, I promise. OK. Well, my family need me. And you now I feel like I was always put on this earth to help people, not just my family. Oh, come on, Cleo, what's actually keeping you here? The family will survive, it's the McQueen's. They've been knocked down that many times. They always get up fighting. And what's the real reason? Well, Miss Miss says I've got no children, no man. So I should just go. I don't think she was trying to insult you. I think she was just recognising that maybe, you know, you could live a life that isn't so conventional. Maybe conventional is what I want. Stay in Hollyoaks, have children, get married. Get married to who? You. I believe that everyone on this earth deserves someone to spend the rest of their lives with. Hello, you know, soulmate, best friend, whatever you want to call it. Clear to me, you are our. And, um, 
Every fibre of my being wants to tell you to stay, but I know that wouldn't be fair. I know you're destined for greater things than me. You're a butterfly. And you're ready to fly. I've got no right to clip your wings. I shouldn't be leaving you. And you not need my help. We all rely on you way too much, and we shouldn't. It's not good for us or you. I just want you to know that I love you. All the way from your toes. <laughs> Up to your little bun bun. <laughs> Are you sure you're going to be all right? I'm not even going to miss you. <laughs> Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pretending to be mad because you're actually sad? No. But who else is going to take bronze out for the nighttime walk? Come here, Doctor. Baby! Room for a little one. Woo! Nana! <laughs> oh, precious girl! I'd like to make a toast to our Cleo. Oh, Nana, don't. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Anyone on the outside world would think our Cleo wasn't a real McQueen. She doesn't wear as much makeup as the rest of us. She doesn't wear any push up bras. Oh, lies. <laughs> She's quite a bit brainier than the rest of us as well. Uh, speak for yourself, Nana. <laughs> but when it comes down to the real stuff the laughing, the crying, and living each day like it's your very last. Our Cleo is a McQueen through and through, and she can drink any one of us under the table. <laughs> but except for John Paul. What? Was that a bit too soon? So, raise your glasses to our Cleo. Oh, <laughs> Cleo, Cleo. Cleo! Oh, my God. <laughs> I know you spoke to Joel. No, I never. You're the puppet master. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> Speech! Yes! <laughs> oh, suddenly India feels like a really, really long way away. I'm not going to be on my own. You lot will always be with me. I love you all so much. The beauty. <laughs> I love you. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> Are you ready? Why is it all happening so fast? Because that's how life is sometimes. <sighs> you are a superstar. Don't you ever forget it. <laughs>